So a normal drive from Calgary to Edmonton takes two and a half, maybe three hours. I'm going to be taking more like nine or ten. I wish I had a nifty title screen. I really do. Alrighty, so here I am in Banff National Park. Uh, about an hour and a half or so west of Calgary. And uh, the place is pretty crowded. Um, the, uh, so apparently there, it's, the, it's Canada's civic holiday this weekend. And besides that, Alberta just gives all of, uh, all of its residents a long weekend every month. And like both of those happened to fall this weekend, so this place is really crowded. Um, there is a gondola that goes up to the top of a mountain, which looks like it would be really cool, except I don't know if you can see, the line to get in there is really, really long, and I don't have time for that. And, uh, but there are some hot springs up here, which that should be, that should be pretty cool. I've never been to a hot spring before. Um, but yeah, this place is spectacular. Take a look. Let's see, look at that view. We're up here in the Canadian Rockies and it is just spectacular. Well, look at this. I found the uh, fabled hot spring. Uh, there's a stream coming down the coming down the mountain and it's collected into pools like this here. And uh, the next pool up, you can actually see steam coming up off the water. Um, I dipped my toe in here. It's night. It's really nice and warm. Um, except the way it smells. Whew. They named this uh, Sulphur Mountain for a very good reason, I gather. Anyway. All right, see, look at that. Um, this is the upper pool here. You can, I think you can see the, um, the steam coming off the water. It's really cool. Um, anywho, but uh, I poked around up there a little bit and it was honestly a little disappointing um, when, the, uh, when the signs were pointing to hot springs and said there was a place to swim. Uh, I was envisioning just like, a little pond in the middle of the woods fed by hot springs that you could uh, you know you could dip into but uh it's a there's like a little lodge up there and there's actually like like there's actually like an in-ground pool clear chlorinated water and everything that is warm they said it was 39 degrees celsius <laughs> and um no seems a little too built up and tourist trappy for my taste. I was, I was hoping to find just like, you know, as I say, a little pool in the middle of the wilderness. But still, this, this place, this setting in the Rockies is spectacular. Oh, let's see. And then this here, there is, is a uh, map here and there's a trail that goes up Sulphur Mountain. 5.5 kilometers, so that's a little over three miles, which would totally be doable if I weren't in such a hurry and wearing, you know, just my shorts and uh, flip-flops. Um, so anyway, I'd, I'll have to save that for another day. Gotta get back on the road. Okay, so still here in Banff. Um, that was where the upper hot springs where I was before, and then one of the uh, park uh, attendants Help me find my way down to the lower hot springs, the cave and basin where the uh, where the original hot springs are. And now I'm in this tunnel, which is cool. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. So. So according to the plaque I saw there, there were a few railroad workers who stumbled upon this hot springs in this cave down here in 1883 and the world took notice and then that was the birth of the uh, Canadian National Parks and this is the cave and hot spring right here uh, there you go you can see it now look at that <laughs> oh yeah, you can smell the sulfur. And light coming in up there. Whew. 
Nice. And then uh, this up here is called the basin. This is the above ground uh, source of the hot springs. You can see the bubbles coming up from the ground where the water is being heated. Um, so yeah. So they have this big uh, this big uh, courtyard here where they have a bunch of uh, period actors just to show what life is like when the uh, when the railroad workers discovered these hot springs in the 1880s. <laughs> Look at those mountains. Okay, so this is the actual like hot spring itself in the wild. They have this boardwalk set up here so you can so you can look at it. And then uh, the water itself is all is entirely off limits because there are, are endangered species who live in there. A special kind of snail that's indigenous to this region. Um, that here it is, and now it's flowing underneath these stairs I'm walking up. And this looks like the very beginning of the hot spring. Everything flows downhill from here. Alrighty, and that, right down, right down that hole, is the cave I was in before. Alright, Banff National Park. Really, really cool. Um, wish I could have more time to linger here and check it out, such as life. Um, but now I gotta battle my way back through the holiday traffic in this in the little town of Banff and get back get back on the highway. Alrighty, so I made it out of the town of Banff. I am back on. Highway 1, the Trans-Canada Highway, and I am venturing deeper into the Canadian Rockies. Um, my next stop is going to be Lake Louise, which is another one that uh, Calgarians, if that's the proper demonym, I don't know, tell me is something I can't miss. So that's maybe another 50 kilometers or so down the road, um, so it shouldn't be there, there for too terribly long. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's as cool as, as cool as, uh, Banff was. Um, I really had a hard time getting myself out of Banff because there was so much neat stuff. I saw signs for, like, Tunnel Mountain. It's like, uh, I so want to see that place. Just like how a mountain got its, got the name Tunnel Mountain. It just sounds really cool. Um, but... I'm gonna have to leave it on my bucket list to come back here and explore in greater depth sometime. But I'm really glad I had a chance to get here to see it now. Alrighty, so I am off the freeway heading toward Lake Louise. Now the signs on the highway said that parking is full, but I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm hoping there's just like a road that I can take around, this, around the lake so I can just get the view and without having to stop. We'll see, and oh look, there is a glacier in the mountains, woohoo! Um, not the first glacier I've seen so far, but the first glacier I've passed. Uh, you can still see the first one off in the distance. Um, and glaciers are cool in more ways than one, haha! Anyway. Alrighty, so I found a place to park at Lake Louise, woohoo! And now, so I'm walking down at little trail to the lake itself now. Uh, walking through the woods, these seem to be like uh, some breed of pine tree. <laughs> They're definitely evergreen. And oh, wow. Look at this. Alrighty, I'm stepping out onto this little dock. So there's a spot here where people can rent canoes and kayaks and things and there's a big hotel over there uh, oh my gosh look at this 
There you go. You can see the glacier in the background. Oh, man. And, I don't know. I don't know if you can see the, uh, that grayish, turquoise-ish color of the water. It's beautiful. And, yeah. The water here is definitely colder than the water at the Banff Hot Springs. If that actually needed to be said. Alrighty, so Lake Louise was spectacular. It was awesome. And um, now I am back on the highway. Uh, getting in and out of Lake Louise was actually was actually pretty painless considering how many tourists they had. Um, but now I am back on the road and I am off the main Highway 1 and I am on Alberta Highway 93 North. Um, headed towards Jasper, and apparently there's a place called the Columbia Ice Fields somewhere up here too, and oh look, another lake! And um, just this road is really cool, it's, it, it's gonna be winding through the mountains, and like you need a park pass to get on this road, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be seeing some neat stuff. Alright, so spontaneous stop on the side of the road. Um, this here, according to the sign, is called Bow Lake, and the uh, river that flows through Calgary is called the Bow River, and um, it stretches all the way here, so I can only assume that the river starts at this lake. Um, I'd have to research that a little bit better to know for sure, but it seems like a safe assumption to me. And then that up there behind me, according to the sign I saw on the side of the road, is the Crowfoot Glacier. And now, I'm doing the best I can, but from this vantage point, you can't really see how majestic it is. Um, anywho. Ah. Uh, anyway, spur of the moment, stop. Stay spontaneous, my friends. Alrighty, another uh, spontaneous stop on um, Alberta Highway 93. Let's see, I just came over that bridge right down there, and there's a little turnout on the side of the road. And it's a good vantage point. I mean, look at these mountains. Um, you hear me use the word spectacular a lot. I wonder if I overuse it, but then again, I do mean it every time I say it. Um, I run out of words to describe the beauty of nature, but I never tire of beholding it. So, and then, there are some other people who, uh, who stopped here too. Don't go there. Yeah, look at the cliff to the sheer face of that mountain there. And then, down here, down there is a river that, um, that the road has been following for the past a few miles, or I guess since I'm in Canada, I have to say kilometers. And there's more of the river up there. And more mountains. Ooh. Just soak it all in. So yeah. Alrighty, I am making progress. Uh, I just crossed into Jasper National Park, which borders Banff National Park. And, um... I found the Columbia Ice Field, I think. I think it's that, right behind me there. Um, and I imagine it lives up to its name in the wintertime. It's just like a it's basically a plain with all kinds of uh, wild grasses and small evergreen trees and everything growing in it. But, get a load of this. That, my friends, that right there is the Athabasca Glacier. Um, and then, oh, which, which are the, uh, glaciers that, that neighbor it? I'm not sure off the top of my head, but look at those beauties. Oh, those are clouds. Um, let's see, oh, the sun's coming down, so you can't get that good a view of this one over here. But look at these marvels of nature, the, ma the mountains and the ice. Let's see. 
you. Alrighty, since I recorded that last little segment a minute ago, I realized two things. One, the, the Columbia Ice Field is not named for that little grassy field I was, uh, look, I was looking at. It's named for these glaciers that are right here. And um, glaciers, basically, just for those who don't know, it's basically just a big river of ice that's been there for eons. And it's, it flows a matter of inches per year through the mountains. And, and um, it's so compact that it doesn't melt. And it picks up rocks and sand and debris and everything from the mountains it flows over. Um, so, second thing I learned is I started to, I started to drive again and I saw there was a road that goes right up to the toe of the Athabasca Glacier, which is where I am right now. Uh, so I got, this is as close as you can safely get to the glacier. Um, I'm, it's cordoned off here because uh, there, around glaciers, there are cracks and crevasses that um, can be easily covered over by arches of snow. And um, you never know where these cracks and crevasses are going to be. So if you step in the wrong place, you can fall in and you get, you get stuck. And there, there's a plaque there explaining, you know, explaining the, the rescue process, right? If somebody, if somebody falls into one of these crevasses, you know, explaining the process of like how the pros get them back out. And they say, this can take hours, which is much longer than it takes hypothermia to kill you. And I mentioned that the last three attempts to rescue people at the Athabasca Glacier were unsuccessful. Um, so I'm not going to venture any farther on than this. But uh, hopefully here you can get a, you can get an idea of just how majestic this glacier is. Um, there we go. Yeah. And then another interesting thing is these big mounds here, like this one and that, are um, those are called moraines. So that is a big pile of rocks and dirt and everything that the glacier pushed for pushed in front of it as as it flowed through the mountain over eons. And um, as the Earth's temperature has been warming up, and as the glacier has receded. You know, the ice melted away a bit and left those big mounds of rocks where they are. And now you can you can see there's a big river almost flowing from the flowing from the glacier itself. That's all glacier meltwater. There's a, and there was actually a, a, a big a big pond of glacier meltwater that some that some people and their dogs were were actually splashing around in um, down by where I parked. Uh, Anyway, Athabasca Glacier, dig it. That's where I parked, way down there. Uh, now the question is, I got up here in flip-flops. Can I get back down in flip-flops? I think I can. Go. Waterfalls! All right, so I saw this sign on the road that says Sunawapta Falls. Yeah, one kilometer. So I pulled. So I pulled over and I and I decided to check it out. Um, so you can see by the size of that person down there, the size and power of that waterfall. I mean, it's really. I mean, it's no Niagara, but I would not want to go over that in a barrel. Um, so and look at the force that the river is coming over that fall with. So you see, it flows down here and it flows under this bridge that I'm standing on. And then it comes out on this other side. And then an interesting thing happens here. You see the, the crack between the, the, the crack between the rocks is narrow. And then especially there's that choke point right there. So the water is basically going through a jet engine. So as powerful as it was before, it comes out with even more force down there. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, how the waves are crashing up against the uh, the inside there, but they're 
they're crashing against it really, really hard, and uh, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I can definitely see like how much the waves have worn away that spot on the rock um, over time, and that the uh, power of erosion is very evident right there, and this is just very spectacular, there's that word again, and very interesting. Waterfall. See, there's, there's more erosion in action right there. Waterfall. Okay. Fun is over. I just topped off and grabbed some eats here in Jasper, Alberta, and now the race is on and I've got to get to Edmonton post haste. All right, internet, um, I am on my way out of Jasper National Park, actually, out of the town, out of the town itself of Jasper, actually, and that right there is a caribou. Yeah, right there on the side of the road. Just chilling. Awesome. Well, I made it. I'm in Edmonton. It's just after midnight and I left Calgary sometime around 11 o'clock in the morning. And yesterday my friend Adam said, told me there was no scenic route between Calgary and Edmonton, and I think I proved him wrong. Ha! Anyway, today was an awesome day. I loved sharing it with all you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to follow my adventure up the uh, Alaska Highway in a couple days, you know, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Hope y'all are doing well. Good night. Peace out.